So I'm also going to show you real quick from the perspective of the actual laptop. So you're going to look for Pasco Capstone. Okay, Pasco Capstone right here. And open that up. Okay. It's going to take a minute to open here. Um, and while we're waiting, we're going to, just going to remind you to make sure you put your device on the scale and zero it out. So we'll go ahead and select uh, really any of these. You can do the table and the graph if you want. We just care about the table. You can even delete or the graph. We could even delete the table there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and expand the graph to fit the full screen. And so from here, when you're ready, you'll head over and you'll plug in the scale or the, the force plate is what it's called. It's just a fancy scale. You heard the little beep. <clears throat> and then you'll click on hardware setup over here on the side. Choose force platform. Actually, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is this. In here, you can click select measurement, force platform. And it's automatically going to set to time right there. You should have zeroed out the scale. And then you, when you're ready to collect data, you can go ahead and click. Oh, wait, I want to change this to 1,000 hertz. Um, or 1 kilohertz. And then we'll click record. And so now it's got just a bunch of noise there. And so this is where I zeroed it out. That's what it zeroed out at. And then I'm going to drop something on there. And I get a nice spike in the center. So when I, I actually pause the video instead of stopping taking data. So, but here's our data. Unfortunately, the way that we manipulate this is the same as with the Chromebooks, but it, it's a little bit more sensitive, which is kind of nice, but um, it's still kind of annoying. So you can see that there's some interesting noise here from the, um, the collision that it had. And so it looks like the collision kind of lasts till about right here. So it's, it looks like here it hit and then it bounced up into the air and then it came back down and hit and then at this point it's kind of back to equilibrium okay so for this one to calculate the impulse we're gonna to want to go we choose this let's see where to go this right here to select the region that we want to use and we can adjust the size of this region so we want it to start it at the beginning here okay Maybe slide it over just a tad so it starts right at the beginning. And I'm actually going to choose all the way over to here till after it's done bouncing. <clears throat> so if you think about a bounce where it's making it go up then coming back down, the net change in momentum from the bounce should be zero. So it's okay if we have all that extra selected. And then we'll click here to find area. And so we get an area of 0.13 Newton seconds. Other information that you can find here is this. First of all, if you can take this region of time, so the, however much time has passed between 8.25 and 8.88 8 seconds maybe, you can divide that by the, divide the area by that time that's passed to find the average force. For that, you might want to lower the region So we get about the same here. So I guess we'll just focus on the main peak. Um, hmm. No, I guess we do need after that, after the bounce. The trick here is that we're unable to, if it bounces, between the force causing it to stop and the force causing it to bounce back into the air. And so that's why I have to kind of select over here. So the average force calculation is going to be tricky, but you could divide that by the region of time, at least good idea. But we can also get... Um, using this tool right here we can say add coordinate and you can drag it and use it to figure out what the maximum force was so in this particular example my maximum force was 138 newtons um, <clears throat> and so you can kind of get that value and then you also get that area like I said you can use that to figure out how fast it was going potentially how high it was dropped from and things like that okay um, and once you've done this, you can actually, once you get the data itself, you can disconnect and let the next group go and take this back to your table to analyze it, okay? Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Also, um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions.